Today's video is a beginner's tutorial on how to use OBS Studio with your Mac OS laptop or computer. I'm going to be showing you guys everything to how to download the software, adding your webcam, gameplay, how to go live on places like Twitch or YouTube, and plenty other fundamental concepts that you're going to want to know. With that said, let's get into it. Alrighty guys, so to get this started, you're first gonna wanna head over to obsproject.com and you're gonna see the option to download this software for Windows, Mac, or Linux. In our case for this video, we're gonna be downloading this for a Mac OS computer and then we're gonna be going with the Apple Silicon option because I am using an M1 Max MacBook Pro computer. Now, in order to install OBS Studio onto our Mac computer, all we're gonna need to do is launch the .dmg file that we just download it to our computer and then drag the OBS app into your applications folder and it's downloaded just like that. But when you go to launch OBS studio, you're going to get a pop up saying, Hey, this is from the internet. Do you trust this? Of course you trust this, but you're also going to need to allow its extensions to work on your computer. So make sure you open your security settings and then just allow, and that will give OBS full functionality on your Mac computer. Okay. So now with your OBS studio launched, you should have something looking like this. One of the first things you guys can do to easily set up your OBS project is by going to the menu bar up top and select selecting tools and then going to the auto configuration wizard. Here you can specify to OBS what you plan on using this software for. Are you gonna be using it for streaming mainly, recording, or are you gonna be using the virtual camera? We're gonna optimize this OBS project for streaming. We're gonna go ahead and select next. Our base canvas can be 1920 by 1080. And then our FPS, let's go with 60. That's pretty much the standard nowadays that a lot of people stream with. So let's do that. We're gonna go ahead and select next, and then we're gonna choose the service that we're going to stream to. For this video, we're gonna go with YouTube. Let's keep these two options checked off. We're gonna connect our account by selecting this option here. It's gonna take us to the Google sign-in and I can just choose the account. All right, we're exited out of there. We've connected our account successfully. And then we're gonna go ahead and select next. Now what's happening is a bandwidth internet speed test. OBS is essentially reaching out to YouTube and testing my internet connection to see what type of settings I could run if I streamed live on YouTube. We got the results in and my connection and computer setup is good enough to stream at a 10,000 bit rate using the Apple hardware encoder and then streaming at a 1080p 60F quality, which we can tweak by the way. But for now, let's apply those settings. When I do that, the YouTube chat is gonna appear. If you wanna keep that, I don't wanna keep it right now, so I'm just gonna remove these dots docs for now, but keep in mind guys, if you ever want those docs to reappear, just go overhead to your docs and then you can easily bring those back on in your OBS project. Now guys, even though OBS Studio just set my settings for me, it's still good to understand how the settings work so that you can make adjustments if you need to. So what we can do here is go over to the right hand side, go over to settings and then we're gonna go to the output option. And this is where you're gonna access those settings that OBS applied. You're gonna see the 10,000 bit rate for streaming. By the way, if you're on Twitch, you should really hang around a 6,000 bit rate. That's just what they prefer to ingest. Audio bit rate, you can keep that as is, but if you do increase it, that does improve the quality a little bit. Video encoder, this is where I have the hardware encoder, but for some of you guys that might not have an M1, M2, M3 silicon based chip, you may even have an Intel machine, but it has dedicated graphics, still use the hardware encoder in this case. But some of you guys out there might just have the Intel chip by itself. So you don't have a dedicated graphics card along with your Mac computer. So in that case, you're probably gonna be using the X264 option. If at all possible and your computer can handle it, just keep the encoder preset as is. That's the default and you really don't wanna mess with the other options here because if you do, you're gonna either have blurry or choppy looking gameplay. We all been there and I don't want you to be there. From here, you can scroll down to your recording settings. You can set your recording path on your computer for where you want your OBS recordings to save. Recording quality, you can keep that same as stream. And then for recording format, I would typically recommend for Mac users to shy away from using MKV. Choose .mov, it's much more compatible, especially with applications such as Final Cut Pro. You're gonna run into a lot of headaches in footage that you're gonna 
gonna need to convert if you don't change that format. The replay buffer is something nice to enable in case you want to record footage that has already previously occurred. It's kind of like a flashback recording option. The next settings tab I wanna show you guys is the video tab. This is where you can set that base and output canvas resolution. Your base canvas is the resolution that your OBS project is in, and then your output resolution is what you're gonna be recording or streaming in. If you wanna record or stream in 2K and 4K resolutions, this is also the place where you're gonna wanna set that. You can choose the drop down and select 3840 by 2160 p that is 4k resolution if you don't see it there then you're going to need to just manually input it there and then you're also going to need to set the output resolution to the same thing if you want to record or stream in that quality you can select the fps value by choosing this drop down here just keep in mind guys depending on how you adjust your settings here you're going to want to tweak your bit rate so that means you're going to, need to go back to output and change your bit rate right here for your stream and i've created this handy little chart that you guys can follow for what your bit rate should be set to depending on the resolution and fps that you're streaming in so you guys can follow this by looking at the left side first for the resolution you're going to be streaming in and then choosing your fps value whether that be 30 or 60 typically and then going down to that bit rate range so if i'm streaming in 1080p 60 for example i can do a bit rate of 4500 to 8000 or more to push that type of stream now if i wanted to stick with going with a 4k 60 fps stream then i'm going to want to set a bit rate of 20,000 to 50,000 or more now youtube will only accept up to 51,000, but that's the idea take that number and you put it here. You don't wanna have a bit rate that's set too low because your video quality is just gonna look very blurry, blotchy, and just poor. I'm good with these settings for now. I'm gonna go ahead and select OK to apply them. The next thing we're gonna add here, guys, is our gameplay and face cam into OBS. To do that, we're first gonna look at the left side where it says scenes, and these make up a collection of sources. So you could have a scene for your gameplay, you could have a scene for your entire webcam, you could have a starting soon scene, be right back, really whatever you come up with. We're gonna take this scene, for example, I'm actually gonna rename it to gameplay. And then for the sources section, I'm gonna go ahead and select this plus button, and then I'm gonna go and add a video capture device. We're gonna name this Elgato 4KX, select OK. We're gonna select the device drop down here, find Elgato 4KX, which is my capture card that I plugged into my Mac laptop. And as you can see, it's popped right up. Everything's connected correctly and we're all good to go. Go ahead and select OK and we're looking pretty good. Now, I didn't forget about you gamers that play games directly on your Mac computer and you're not using a capture card. So for you guys, you're gonna wanna go back to your sources, select the plus button, and this time you're gonna wanna do a Mac OS screen capture. Select that, you can name this whatever you'd like, we'll just keep it as is for now. We're gonna select OK. For the method dropdown, you can either do a display capture, which is gonna be your entire monitor or your entire screen if you want to capture that you can do a window capture which honestly guys is not usable it's just docs and random icons that are on your computer this is not what you want but another good option which is probably the best option here is application capture here you can choose the display that you're playing on and then you can choose the application drop down to select the specific app that you're gaming with and all i need to do is move around and resize the application window here. And what's also nice is that with the Mac OS screen capture source, the audio will be recorded automatically. Now, what if we wanna make our live streams more engaging by having a face cam over top of our gameplay? Well, to do that, all we need to do is go to the plus button and we're gonna add another video capture device. This time, it's gonna be our webcam. Select OK. We're gonna choose the device dropdown and select the webcam, which is the OpsBot Tiny2 Lightstream camera, which happens to be the sponsor of today's video. The OpsBot Tiny2 Lite is a newly released webcam that offers 4K video quality, has a one over two inch CMOS sensor, sits on a two axis gimbal for fluid movement, has a dual omnidirectional microphone, and it has really cool AI tracking abilities. I mean, Check this out. I can just use my hand like that and it's just it's going to start tracking me. And best of all, I love the quality of this webcam with a decent lighting setup. 
you're gonna be looking so sharp. Tiny2 comes with software where you can set different camera positions and a cool background blur feature. It works great on both Mac and Windows computers. And best of all, it's only starting at a price of 179, which compared to the rest of the market making AI web cameras that are in 4K quality like this, is significantly less. You guys can check out this webcam using my link in the description below. And I also left a little discount code for you if you end up picking it up. One thing we must do with this webcam is shrink it down so that it's over our gameplay. So all I'm gonna do is just select the webcam and just shrink it down. And I can just put it to anywhere I want. Resize it using the corners a little bit more. I'm pretty happy with that. But one thing I don't necessarily need is all of the space out here on the sides. So what I can do is by selecting the option key, I can bring in these sides just like that. So that way I can kind of center myself up. Now, I typically not like to keep my sources as is. So one thing that I like to do, and we can do this with the gameplay first, is by selecting it, I can go to my filters, and this is where I can add different effects to my source. So one filter that's great to add under the effect filters is if we go to the plus button, we can actually add color correction. Here I can tweak my brightness a little bit, the contrast, and also the saturation to make my image pop way more than what you're given by default from a capture card. And I can apply these same techniques to my webcam as well to make that look even better than it already is. One thing you can probably clearly tell we haven't added to the mix here yet is our audio. This audio mixer for us is just completely bare and empty. So let's start off with one of the essential audio components of any stream setup, that being a microphone. You probably have one via USB plugged in your computer, or if you don't have one, you could always use the microphone that's on your Mac computer. But to add that microphone, you're gonna wanna go to your settings, go to audio, and then from here, you're gonna wanna go to one of your mic auxiliary devices, select that drop down, and then choose your microphone. In my case, I'm using the Elgato Wave 3 right now, so I, I can go ahead and select that. Okay, you're gonna see the microphone audio added directly into my audio mixer here, and I'm not gonna want this to peak too much, you know, maybe to the upper yellow area here. That's pretty good. Now, how about the gameplay audio? Well, on Mac, it doesn't automatically come with a video capture device source. So you're gonna need to go and add a new audio source, which is gonna be an audio input capture source. You can name this Elgato 4K X Audio. Select OK. We're gonna select the device dropdown, and then we're just gonna choose the Elgato 4K X capture card right there. No other settings need to be changed, select OK. And as you can see, that audio is coming through now. And I'm gonna lower this a little bit less than the microphone audio so that my voice will always shine through more than the gameplay. You don't want the gameplay sound fighting your voice because then no one can hear what you're saying. But now what if you wanna capture audio from applications such as Spotify or Discord without having to capture them to get the audio? Well, all you need to do is go back to your sources, select the plus button, and you're gonna wanna add a macOS audio capture source. Let's go ahead and name this one Spotify, select okay. And then for the method, we're just gonna wanna select the drop down and choose application audio capture. And then from there, you're gonna get this application section that's gonna pop up, select that drop down, and then you can choose the application of your choosing. For me, it's gonna be Spotify. Just keep in mind, if you don't see your app listed there, you're gonna need to play sound out of that application first, and then you can refresh this and you'll see your application that you wanna capture audio from. I'm all set to go, so I'm gonna select Okay, you're gonna see another audio source appear in the mixer. And just as a cheeky test, we're gonna play some music. And you can see it's coming through super loud, so we don't want it to be too loud, but it's working. And one thing to note for the Elgato capture card audio source, since I am sending that audio over HDMI from the PlayStation 5, I need to be able to hear that gameplay from the computer. So what I'm gonna do with this source is go to this three dotted icon, I'm gonna go to my advanced audio properties. And from here, I'm gonna look for the audio source of the Elgato 4KX. That's right here. And then if I look all the way over to the right hand side under audio monitoring, I'm gonna see this drop down that I can select. 
and choose monitor and output. So now I can hear the game audio coming from the PlayStation to the capture card to my Mac. If for some reason I'm not hearing the audio, I need to go to my settings, go to audio. And if I scroll down a little bit to where it says advanced, I need to make sure that my monitoring device is set to where I am listening from. So if it's gonna be out of my Elgato Wave microphone, then I need to make sure that's selected so that when my headphones are plugged into this device, I can hear the game audio. Okay, let's add another scene to the mix here. This is gonna be my chatting scene, okay. And for this one, I'm gonna add another video capture device, but this time it's gonna be an existing source. It's gonna be that OpSpot Tiny 2 Lite webcam. Add that on in and there we go. We're looking good. So this can be, you know, we're chilling, we're chatting, no gameplay needed. And then I'm gonna add one other additional scene here and this is gonna be a starting scene. Select okay. And what I'm gonna do with this scene is bring in some overlays. I actually downloaded some here from Owned. So if you are looking for overlays, I have an affiliate link that you guys can check out. But I'm gonna throw some of them in here just so you can get a feel for what they look like. This one here. It's gonna be my starting scene. So throw that bad boy on in. This is what it looks like. And the important thing that I'm gonna to need to do so that this doesn't go black at the very end, which it just did, is I'm gonna go into this source and I wanna make sure that we're looping this source. Also don't wanna show nothing when the playback ends. We want this thing to fully loop so we have no black screens. For my gameplay scene, I'm actually gonna bring in a face cam, which is, this is my my actual primary face cam that I use for any streams that I do do, do do, do. And uh, I actually had this one custom made uh, off of Fiverr. I'm just gonna readjust my webcam so that it fits the way that we want in the face cam border here. Let's do a little bit of that. I'm just clicking the option key here and dragging stuff on in and that looks very good. I'm gonna hide that since there's no audio coming from that face cam source, just to keep things clean. The other overlays that are a must have part of your stream are alerts and then in some cases, a chat widget. Now there are a couple different options out there that you guys can use for these types of features. One of them is Streamlabs, which I've used a ton in the past. It's super easy to use. But for this tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you guys a new one well, not necessarily new, but that is Stream Elements. You guys can log into this dashboard using the account you plan on live streaming to, just like Streamlabs. And once you're in, you can go over to the left-hand side, select the Streaming Tools option, go to Overlays, and then from here, you're gonna wanna create a new overlay. So select that button. You can choose the resolution of your stream. We're gonna go with 1080p, and then just select Start. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and give this overlay a name, and we're gonna add some widgets to this canvas. So all we need to do is go to the plus button down here, and then we can just go ahead to alerts, go to alert box, and that will bring up the source where our alerts will funnel through. Now this is pretty big right now, so I'm gonna take the corners, just drag it on in just a little bit there. Now if I wanna adjust the settings for each and every type of alert that might come through, I can do that right over here on the left-hand side with the alert box layer selected. So for example, I can go to the subscriber alert setting so I can change what the animation or the icon that's gonna appear. You can get GIF animations off of places like Giphy, for example, I've done that myself. Let's give it a little test real quick by going to emulate subscriber event. Okay, it's working. Let's next add a widget for the chat. So we're just gonna go to the plus button again, go to stream tools, and then we're gonna add right here your streams chat in real time to our canvas. And we can adjust this to how we like. Let's make the chat nice and long. I don't like the dark theme for the chat widget. We're gonna make it transparent. So we did the custom option here and the background color, as you can see, is checkerboarded, which means it's transparent. So now all we need to do is go ahead and select the save option. Then over to the left of that, you're gonna see the copy overlay URL. Select that to copy the link to this overlay sheet that we just made. And now back in OBS within one of our scenes, you're gonna wanna go to your sources, select the plus button, and we're gonna add a browser source. Let's name this stream elements, select okay. And then right where you have this URL, you're gonna wanna paste in that stream elements overlay link. You're also gonna wanna adjust the width and height to be 1920 by 1080 because that's what we set our stream elements canvas to be. Go ahead and select okay. Now that we have all of our scenes set up the way that we want them to be, you know, it can be a little bit tedious to click each and every scene one at a time. So one thing we can do is go to our settings, 
then go to hotkeys. And this is where we can set different shortcuts that we can just select on our keyboard to perform certain actions right within OBS Studio. So just by typing in scene, I can find a keybind option that I can set for switching to the chatting scene. So just for the example, we'll do X. And then for gameplay, we can do C. And now if we select OK, and I select X, and now I select C, I can easily switch back and forth without having to move my mouse to switch back to the gameplay scene. Now, my recommendation, if you are gonna be streaming for the long term, definitely invest in an Elgato Stream Deck or even a Loop Deck because you can configure those devices to single press buttons to perform certain actions. It can expand far beyond just scene switching, but that's like at a fundamental level what they can be used for. At this point, guys, we are all set to go live. So all we need to do is press the start streaming button. If you're on Twitch, it'll push it straight out. For YouTube, you will need to set up a broadcast. So if I select start streaming, I'll need to go to manage a broadcast. And this allows me to actually set it up so I can title it and put a description, the privacy. No, it's not made for kids. You can even upload a thumbnail as well. Make sure that that's 1920 by 1080. You can select that directly from your computer, which is so convenient. Latency, if you're on YouTube, make sure it's set to ultra low especially if you're doing a 1080p stream because you want to have the most real-time interaction as possible with your viewers and everything else is set to go. You can just select create broadcast and start streaming, wait for OBS to push it through and you will be live. You can monitor all of your stream data at the bottom. So your drop frames, the bit rate that you're pushing, how long you've been live. If you're recording, you'll see your timer here. You'll see your CPU utilization next to that. You typically don't want to see this ticking over eight to nine, 10% or higher because then your stream will start suffering. So if you do run into encoding overload errors or network issues, you're gonna wanna go back to your settings and go to the output tab, go to your video bitrate and reduce it by intervals of 500 until your issue is resolved. One tip I recommend for those of you who want to make adjustments on the fly to your stream without your viewer seeing what you're working on is if you press this option here, which is studio mode, this will allow you to make those adjustments. You can simply go to one of your other scenes. What you see on the left is your preview screen. So it's not what's going to be live. What you see on the right is your program. But since I'm in my chatting scene, here I can make any edits that I want right within the sources or audio whatever I need to adjust you can set a transition maybe I don't want it to be a cut transition but I can select this drop down maybe let's do a fade and then I can just select transition and boom there you go super freaking handy to do oh let's not forget about our docs right we got Got to bring those back on in, at least our chat, right? Hi, hi, hi. Everything's working. Once you're all finished with your stream, just go ahead and select stop streaming, select yes, and OBS will close out your live stream. But there you guys have it. I know this video was a long one. We covered so much information, and I would say this was definitely the bulk of the information that you need to know for running a live stream through OBS Studio. Of course, you can dig into plugins if you want as well. That's an entire rabbit hole in and of itself, but if you mess with plugins, you're gonna be able to really customize the things that you can do with OBS Studio. Thank you guys, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.